What is up, Need for Speed Racers? It is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut, and we are here today with the viewer requested Austin Martin DB5. It's the James Bond car, and we out here drifting and sliding all over the place. It is rowdy. I've got it built out to A+. I tried it in A, tried it in A+. A was really underwhelming for me, you guys. When there's like 10 cars that are better than it, I really have trouble bringing you that build. In A+, it slots a little better. It's still pretty rowdy, but it fit better for me, so that's why I've got this build for you here. Viewer requested means that you guys asked for it. Viewer requested means that you guys voted on it. So, the way that works is drop a comment down below on this video on what you want to see me build next. Whatever comment gets the most likes will be the car that I build for you guys. I would recommend doing a search on my channel uh, before you drop a comment on what you want. It happened a couple times this week where people were like, oh, this car or this car. And I'm like, I've already got it. Here's the build. Here's the build. It's delivered. So just check make sure it's not something I've done yet. There are a lot of cars that aren't on the channel or classes I haven't done. Coming up, I have the Corvette C8 for you. You're not going to like it, but I've got it. It's The Corvettes are rough, you guys. Um, but hey, I want to bring what you guys want. We are in week two of the Copium series. We had a ton of success last week in the Beetle. This week we are running the 370Z on Wild Thing. It's the Nismo edition of the 370Z, so you've got to do all your stunt jumps to unlock it. On the video that I will have to click on at the end of this one, you can get the information on Copium Series, what you need to do to unlock the car. I've got some really helpful stuff in the video description there. A map on where to go do all the stunt jumps and then also a video that shows all of the stunt jumps. So, real talk, it should only take you about maybe an hour, hour and a half to go unlock that car. They gift it to you so you don't have to pay for it. And then you've also got all your stunt jumps done. So that's pretty cool too. Um, it's a lot of fun. We had a huge participation last week. I want you guys to participate this week. We're already on pace to pretty much match what we did last week, which is awesome. I think we've got 35 plus entries going right now, and it's Tuesday. So uh, keep them coming. I want to have you there. It is the only series like this. There are other race series out there, but they're not really tailored to new players. This one really is. It's designed for new players that have never participated in anything from before. It's designed for people to just get their foot in the door on a competitive scene in Need for Speed. And it's really designed to get guys that are newer at the game or their pace is not you know, super meta like some of the top guys, but get them into classes and get them into splits where they're around people of a like nature of a very similar time. And it's awesome. Last week we had tremendous success and we're just gonna keep this ball rolling. So support me, support the Corn Nut crew, come and hang out. You can do email or Discord to submit your time. Take a picture, grab a screenshot, whatever you can, as long as you can get your end of race time to me with your name, it shows the car and the time you did on what track, it's all I need. And I'll get you in the door. And that's why we're the only one like this because everything else you gotta submit video or you have to be a part of the Discord. You gotta do a lot, I don't care. You can email it to me. I got you. Let's dig into the DB5. For the engine on the DB5 build, it is the 4.0 liter inline six. It is the very first iron basic motor, 282 brake horsepower when we start and we go up a ways from there. For the parts, you're running silver pro induction, elite platinum ECU, elite platinum fuel system, elite platinum exhaust, and Elite Platinum Twin Turbos. I've got two builds. I'm going to show you the second one in a second here. Sport Bronze Nitrous. Elite Platinum Road Suspension. Iron Basic Brakes. And Elite Platinum Grip Tires. Believe me, guys, you want the grippies. This is a pretty rowdy girl. Iron Basic Clutch. And Sport Bronze Four Speed Transmission. Elite Platinum Differential. We do need that to get the most out of our slider. And then the auxiliaries are Nitrous Drift and Nitrous Grip. For the handling, slide that slider all the way to the left, 80% grip. Steering sensitivity, I ran two clicks high. It was pretty rowdy. I might recommend middle of the road, maybe a little less than that. But guys, that is a personal preference thing. So just do whatever feels natural to you that you can control the car. Downforce, I run it all the way high. 
All the way high gives us an A plus 268. You can run it lower and have an A269, but with how rowdy this car is, 268. Traction control is off, drift entry is brake tap. It's gonna give you the Austin Martin DB5. Top speed 180, it'll do like 185 with this build on the 20s. 811 on the horsepower and 720 on the torque. I said I had two builds and there is a reason for that. The second build is the rowdier, crazier build. I would say that the twins build is a little easier to control. The power comes on a little more linear and it doesn't just slap you in the face like the screw does. But if you want to get crazy, uh, the one that I used in all the gameplay footage is the screw build and you'll see that I was fighting it the whole time. After I got the gameplay footage, I did try this because it was the alternative that Neil and I had cooked up and it's still pretty solid, but it's a little bit less rowdy. So guys, go with what you feel. For the parts on that other build, all you do is you go and you grab the uh, Elite Screw Supercharger, run Elite Induction, and then knock your exhaust down to Silver Pro. So what that does, it goes Elite, 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 Silver Pro Exhaust, and then Elite Screw. And what that does is it gives you 799 on the horsepower and 721 on the torque. So the torque is very similar to what the twins do, but it gives you that calculation of the horsepower and the torque when you're at peak RPMs. With the screw supercharger, it's gonna give you that, that push, that torque way earlier in the gear and it makes the car feel a little more rowdy. So guys, you can try either one. Uh, the, really the difference is just swapping the induction and the exhaust and then the forced induction going from screws to twins or vice versa. I bring you both because I want to give you guys options because at the end of the day, it's you that's playing the game. So the more information and the more builds you have to work with, the better off you are. I would say for a newer player, throw in the 20s. If you are rowdy, you might try the screw. All my gameplay is in that and I'm going to show you how rowdy you can be. It is not a good playlist but it is an honest playlist and it will show you what the car does when you're fighting it. And I want to try to provide you guys with that type of gameplay so you can see what the car is gonna do, what skill issues look like when I'm driving, and just the idea of here's what it is when you're actually in a real world setting. If I just gave you the perfect runs all the time, it would set you up for not success, but an idea that's not there. If I just show you perfect runs, you might think the car is better than what it really is when it gets into hands that are maybe not as capable. And I've got pretty capable hands and I'm struggling, so I don't want you guys to be surprised. Stay tuned for that gameplay footage. Guys, jump in Copium Series. We want you. We want you. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right, wild thing. I already shot all the gameplay footage for this, but my mic was off, so that was like perfect skill issue over here on my part. Uh, our man here is in a Rosa, so we know that car dominates A+. So we've got our work cut out for us. We are going to launch in third gear. He missed his launch, thank Christ. We're going to have an opportunity to break away here. This car likes to get a little rowdy. You'll see it sliding on me just a little bit there. So you guys got to be aware of that going in with this one. Um, it'll catch you off guard. Now I'm tri I'm chaining my left and my rights here. That should then give me a nice big three bar as soon as I straighten out here. Right there. And we'll cap that around the corner. It a little over rotated on me. That's my error. <clears throat> like I said, this car is kind of a, a rowdy one, boys. So when you're getting into it, just be aware that it's going to come around on you. But it, it's pretty nimble. It's pretty fast. So coming up into this corner, I know it's a left-hand turn. I know the car likes to rotate, so I'm going to tap the brakes on entry, do what we can to get into a micro drift, and just hold that steady without touching the wall there. That should have us a three bar from the big grip turn as soon as it uh, decides to straighten us out. All right. Very cool video game. No bars for us. That's all right. I think I might have hit the boost a little early, and that was kind of my fault. We're going to try to get this up to a three bar with some taps. I just um, hit the boost and then I tapped the brake to turn the car a little bit while we were boosting. That allowed us to get a really nice sharp corner there. 
That, that usually does work, but sometimes uh, the car will rotate a lot more than you want, and then you're, you'll be in trouble when you do that, so... There, all we did was steer over, take out that tree. When you guys make that corner, if you line up for that tree, it'll kind of set you up for a straight line towards the end of the track. And that'll <clears throat> give you kind of some sight lines on where you want to point your car. A 145.05 is not bad. That would put us right in the middle of the line with the Copium Series. But I do know that uh, the guys and gals running that 370Z this week are uh, doing quite well in that car. So uh, we were in trouble. Now, our opponent, <clears throat> excuse me. It's allergy season, and I'm fighting it, you guys. He swapped from the Regera over... Not the Regera. From the Testarossa over to the Porsche. In doing that, he's not going to have any manual pre-shift. Now, if he's running automatic, that's not a problem. But for you guys, if you're switching cars mid-playlist running manual, you're not going to be able to pre-shift like I am. So we're out of the gate going to have a better launch than our opponent here. Knowing that, um, we don't really have to worry too much about him. We're able to just kind of set our lines and go. For this track, it's really good to focus on what's ahead of you, but then also kind of set up wide, try to grab a near miss or two there, micro drift in, and then build up that boost so that way we can have a three bar going into this corner, and we can hang a nice tight corner, get another three bar from the long corner, use that to accelerate down the straightaway. It puts a big gap on our opponents because we're already up to speed. I like to get close to these cars here, get a lot of near misses, Micro drift this corner, wait till it gives us the three bar, and then use that boost around that corner. Uh, skill issue, I got a little loose because this car is a little rowdy. And uh, that, that's what threw us into the wall there, it came around on us. <clears throat> got a lot of crud in my throat, you guys, it's terrible. Now here, um, if you can line up that jump on the right side that's safer because of traffic, uh, where I was at I just kind of lined up and then prayed. So we will maximize our boost there. We've got a three bar. We're going to use it right here around this corner. Car rotates again. No reset. That's pretty rough. We're now really going to have to fight for it to catch back up to our opponent. It looks like he got hung up too. And so I'm um, not going to get that far ahead of us by the looks of things. It is only a two lap race. So I'm going to have to chain the next two corners together pretty well to try to catch him. With that little bit of a jump and that little bit of near misses there. Combo that here. It awards us the three bar. We're going to pray to God that we don't die. We are catching him a little bit, but he is going to beat us. So that's lots and lots of errors on my part. That's the car coming around on me. That's just it being rowdy. I've got the downforce turned all the way up on this thing. The only other thing I could do to maybe adjust the way the car handles is to take some of the torque out of it. You'll see that we've got 721 foot-pounds of torque paired up with our 799 on the horsepower. If I wanted to reduce that, I might switch over to like the twin turbos. The linear way the power is put on with that is a little smoother instead of like a straight line. So it makes the car a little less rowdy. But I like the car when it is not mid-corner. It, it really, with the four speed, doesn't accelerate as good as I would like. And so... That's why I've defaulted to the screw to give us the most out of the corners possible, but I think it makes it a little rowdier. We'll launch a second here just to see what we can come up with. Second's not too bad. Uh, we get right to the top of it, and then we shift right when we're running out of NOS. We shouldn't have too much of a problem on this track. Um, you can micro drift a lot of the corners, and knowing that the car is rowdy and not having to worry so much about everything, um, I shouldn't crash too much. That's what I was going to say as we murder ourselves in that car. So he over-rotated a lot there. I don't know why we didn't get any kind of uh, grip turn or anything. We're gonna micro drift this corner, try to build some boost. There it is. We'll use that, we'll shoot right at the billboard. Oh my god. There's a rock there, obviously. We murdered ourselves on that, that was real, truly special. Now we're in damage control mode. I gotta try to just catch that guy and give it everything we've got without throwing the car away. Gonna use all of our resources to get back up to speed, so I used the little bit of NOS that I had, used the little bit of boost that I had. He looks like he went off the track here, so we'll try to clip him on the way by. Sometimes you can get a takedown and give yourself a three bar. That's a great way to go. So 
So I've got a turn coming up. I'm already going pretty close to top speed for this car, so I'm doing that little wiggle to try to get and accumulate boost. Ah, uh, this this car is frustrating, you guys. Um, it's got a lot of power, but it's just not set up to really handle the power as good as I would like. It looks like he missed the checkpoint, so we were able to pass him there. Uh, we're both out here running with skill issues. It's a good thing it's not a full lobby, otherwise your boy right here would be getting DNF'd. I probably will use this gameplay footage because I want you guys to see kind of what you're going to be getting into with this car. Uh, if I show you just how it performs when you're doing it perfect, um, you know, that could lead somebody astray and make them think that this is actually a really good car to have. It's pretty rowdy. It likes to fishtail, and this is with a full grip build. Um, Slide said that he didn't really care for drifting it too much, and so I don't know that it's that good of a drift car. I think it could be utilized potentially, but not by me. Now with this big corner here, if you can turn and then straighten out and then turn and kind of straighten out like I did there, you can get uh, bars of boost as you go through the corner. So you turn in, straighten out, get the boost, turn back in, straighten out, and you're just getting a bunch of grip turns one after another and it helps you carry the speed through the corner. Uh, that's going to be a really lackluster playlist, but it gives you an idea of what you're getting into because I don't want to surprise anybody with this thing. It is not that exciting. Um, people were saying it's got a, it's a really good A-class build. I tried it in A. I felt that it was like way underpowered for A. At least in A+, it's got a top speed that's pretty good. So you're able to make up for some of its downfall in some of the straight line sections. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.